Michelle Beckham Corbin, President of C3 Creating Connections Consulting, a social media marketing consulting firm. And I'm Mark McCumber, President of McCumber Creations, and welcome to our show, Digitally Speaking. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, um, this is show number 10 for us. And, uh, and Mark, that means that, that we're about to hit the one year mark. Big number 10. Big number 10. Yeah. So that's uh, really exciting for us. And uh, it's exciting to see how many people are viewing the show on YouTube. You know, we check out the stats every once in a while. So, um, so that's really good. And, and we welcome questions. Um, any questions that you might have, you know, you're more than welcome to shoot us an email at um, info at creatingconnectionsconsulting.com um, or call the station at ACTV. And we're happy to, uh, to get back to you. Um, speaking of shows, if folks would like to see our last show and, and any of the other nine, um, our last show was on mobile apps. And Mark and I discussed um, the top apps for 2014 in a lot of different categories. And uh, we also shared some of our own favorites, which mm -hmm. yours was. Lots of favorite. Well, GarageBand is my current and still local favorite. Yeah. Holding the number one position again this week, so that's right. It was fascinating to hear about GarageBand, and then um, I shared um, an obsession that I have, and um, I'm just not going to tell you what that is on this particular show. You'll have to go back to number nine, mobile apps, and watch it. But uh, today we are going to be talking about visual media. One of my favorite things, visual media, uh, very very exciting and um, very accessible now. Everybody's a filmmaker. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the next Sam Peckinpah is right out there, you know. Stanley Kubrick, he's out there. They're all out there. They're you waiting. know, it's funny when you uh, say everybody's a filmmaker. Uh, I was thinking the other day, this is a little off topic as far as, uh, you know, social media, but um, just the, the rise in reality TV shows. Oh, yeah. You know, and not crazy reality TV shows, but, but really, you know, going to a little town and filming what they do. Right. And, and that kind of gets back to we are all so used to seeing everybody's personal little sure. YouTube videos that they're, that they're yeah. you know, creating, producing, yes. and they're sharing through social media. Yes. And that is one of the reasons why visual media is on the rise. So many of us are accessing our social media through um, through our phones, so through mobile apps, and it makes it very, very easy for us to share the mm -hmm. media that we're finding. Sure, and then I think um, some of these some of these apps that, that uh, just show little tweaks to it, they set limits on some of them. They can only go so far, so you've got to be really concise, have your script well thought out, and give everybody a really cool one-minute little piece of whatever you're trying to convey. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a really, really, again, an exciting time in the, in the digital world that all these things are coming to the forefront and changing us sociologically. I mean, it's this, this digital um, explosion has, has really impacted so many different aspects of life. I mean, I walk around every day and see people with their devices and, you know, and there's so much that you can do and at, w at one point, everybody says, oh, it's a distraction. You know, everybody's, everybody's, you know, is buried into their devices. But it's kind of opening up a whole other portal to a totally different world. And uh, the possibilities seem to be endless. Well, and it is. And I think when you said opening up, um, like a portal to another world, it's to many different worlds. Because, you know, and, and we're going to talk a lot today about some of the, the major um, visual media platforms, and I just want to mention them really quickly. Um, obviously, um, you know, when you're talking about video, YouTube um, is number one, but we'll also touch a little bit on um, Pinterest and, um, and Instagram and Vine. But, uh, I think it's, again, that ability to create a snapshot of what we're doing. And I have been guilty of this. Mark, you can tell me if you've ever noticed this. When you go into a restaurant and you see people lining up their food for that perfect shot <laughs> that they can send to Instagram, because I know I do that. Even if it's not my meal, you know, let's say it's my husband's, I say, don't touch it. Uh -huh. You know, don't even take a bite out of it. Right. Let me kind of arrange right. the uh, glasses and things. Exactly. Uh -huh. I become a food stylist. That's good. Um, and, and so you see a lot of that. And uh, I know for me, Instagram um, is is wonderful. I, I, I take a lot 
uh, pictures of a lot more things than, mm -hmm. than just food, a lot sure. of other things as well. But, um, but it's been a great community to share. Mm -hmm. And um, I personally love to follow Instagrammers that are in other countries. Mm -hmm. Because as the, I'm filming my daily life, they're sure. filming their daily life. But you know, obviously daily life in Turkey is quite different than daily life in you know, Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I just find that incredibly fascinating. Mm -hmm. It is, it is a glimpse into things um, that, that really do take you to other places and, um, and give you, again, access to so much information and so many things that you would normally not see. So it's just a, it's a great medium. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, kind of the key points in terms of um, why, why is visual content so important today? And that is, just as we've been talking, it's because images matter. Even if you are talking about a news feed, whether it's a LinkedIn news feed or mm -hmm. Facebook or even Twitter, the things that kind of pop immediately to you are the pictures. Yes. You know, your eye is just drawn to them. And actually, studies have shown that um, the brain processes images 60,000 times faster than text. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your, your brain's just going right to it and, and, uh, and drawn to it and, and kind of synthesizing that information. So you've got that piece, then images are very important to, to our society today. Um, you know, we mentioned before about the fact with our mobile devices that we're able to share very, very easily. And then the other big thing, too, is social proof. When a friend or someone that we hold in high esteem share something and that's very visual, um, you know, we think, wow, it's got, it's got to have some kind of worth, right? Because mm -hmm. someone who we admire, mm -hmm. trust, et cetera, is sharing something. Mm -hmm. And then, again, it makes it very easy to, um, to pass that on. And then the last piece in terms of, um, you know, why this is important today is that we've also really kind of had an evolution. We started out with people sharing a lot of their own visual content, which people are still doing, but today we're really moving to a lot of curated content. So we saw this um, probably first come about years ago with Tumblr. Mm -hmm. um, Pinterest, the pin board for images, it, it, that's what it's all about. It, it's people sharing a lot of times other people's content. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, there's that whole rise of we're all just sharing things that other people are creating. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's ab absolutely a huge, a huge shift. Well, a picture is worth uh, ten thousand words, and some of the imagery that you see um, being shared these days is really unbelievable. Whether it be from other parts of the planet and the galaxies, for that matter. They've one of my again one of my favorite ones that I like to watch is um, the one that shows all the pictures from the Hubble telescope. Oh yeah, and it shows some of the most amazing pictures of the cosmos and it's just stunning to think that uh, we're just little we're just little atoms down here and uh, the digital world is is huge so it's it, it, it is really interesting um, the visual imagery and the glimpse into other people's worlds right and I think to your point which was that now it's interesting people that we think about or we regard or people that are just our friends are sharing amazing things that they're going through and you see a perspective it's like that shift that paradigm shift that people talk about all the time to get outside yourself to see another perspective right. and that's something that the visuals just really impact and and prove more than maybe even just a, a conversation whether it's audible or visual it, it you're not reading it you're seeing these these images and uh like i say they they do uh, they do represent thousands of words so yeah, and you know, it, it, there, are, there are a couple of instances where you've got that combination. So um, one is, <coughs> excuse me, I knew I was going to cough, getting over bronchitis. Um, you see a lot of people who are sharing, let's say, quotes, sure. but in a visual way. Mm -hmm. So there might be, you know, some imagery in the background and then the text. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, the other piece is infographics. Mm -hmm. So people are taking information, a lot of times it's data that could mm -hmm. be very dry and kind of boring to read mm -hmm. by itself, and they are creating these beautiful kind of pictorial images mm -hmm. with the information or the data. Mm -hmm. um, and it just makes it a lot easier for mm -hmm. people to read. I think, um, you know, there are, there are two things that um, a, a business needs 
to really think about when they're talking about how do you harness the power of visual content, and that is creating a strategy for visual content. Mm -hmm. And so um, what a business needs to do, and I'm going to share some examples of, of some success stories, but, but just to kind of set the stage, what a business really needs to do is to, number one, take a look at their website and, and their blog, if they have one, and see what kinds of images do we have right now or, you know, do we have any? Mm -hmm. um, because, again, the, the, the uh, visuals will help tell a story. But even more importantly, when people are sharing things from a website or a blog, um, you know, usually there is a little thumbnail image mm -hmm. that goes along with, you know, the name of or and the mm -hmm. link to the piece. And if you don't have an image on your site, you don't really have anything that's getting shared. And so that kind of um, dovetails into the whole Pinterest idea. Mm -hmm. If someone wants to share something from your website on Pinterest, there's got to be an image for Pinterest to grab. Mm -hmm. And if there isn't an image, it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. So um, so very, very important to, to have that strategy, to start by looking at what you have right now, so website and blog. But beyond that, it's taking a look at those key areas, the Pinterest, um, Instagram, YouTube, and saying, OK, for our particular type of business, um, you know, what kind of a strategy can we come up with to use one of these platforms so they make sense for what we do? And um, I wanted to share an example. Um, there is a tourism company. Um, I just want to make sure I got the name correctly since I'm mentioning them. Um, tourism Australia, that's mm -hmm. their name. And so what they wanted to do um, was to kind of build a strategy. And you can imagine tourism, it's all about mm -hmm. pictures, right? Yeah, sure. And video and all of that. And so they created a campaign where um, they wanted to promote people coming to Australia. So they created a hashtag. And um, pretty soon on your screen, we'll have the definition of hashtag in case someone's not really familiar with how it works. But um, they created the hashtag See Australia. And they invited people to share their own vacation pictures. Mm. And what they did was they went through and kind of curated them and picked the best ones mm -hmm. and featured them on their site. Mm -hmm. Well, that became so popular that they got to the point where two and a half years later, people, meaning you know, content coming from outside the company, um, they were posting, so fans were posting over a 1,000 photos a day. Wow. A 1,000 photos a day. So imagine all of that extra marketing that you're getting mm -hmm. because the photos are all tying back to your hashtag and to your website. And the other thing that's really nice about um, Tourism Australia is that they included others in their marketing. So um, all of the different kinds of maybe side businesses that would tie in with that, um, you know, regions, destinations, other small businesses in the area, so that they were promoting everybody but then it all comes back to them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of a circle, but it all, it all comes back to really giving marketing to them. So it really gave a, a wider reach for marketing for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. But that is just an incredible success story of, um, of using a hashtag. And I've got mm -hmm. some other ones too, but I've been talking for so long, I want to let you jump in. No, that's, I mean, these are all, <clears throat> these are all great anecdotes, stories about, um, about how all of this is working so much into the, the, the social medium and it's expanding and it's changing so rapidly. Um, and I think one of the things that's exceptionally interesting about it is that um, it's happening faster and faster and faster. It just oh, keeps yeah. happening faster and people are adapting to the speed. Yeah. Of being able to say, oh, I saw that. Okay, great. Let's move on. What's next? What's next? What's right. next? Right. It's, it's, it's the value of that, that real-time sharing. Yes. You know, like another personal example, um, I've been going, as you know, through the college admissions process. And so now that colleges have kind of released their admissions letters, they are asking the students to post a picture of themselves, you know, with their, I mm -hmm. got it, or congratulations, you're in, mm -hmm. letter, um, and using hashtags that, that key back mm -hmm. to the school. Beca and the kids are so excited, you know, I got into my dream school, et cetera. Sure. So they want to share that. But what it does is it's increased advertising or marketing oh, for sure. the college. So it's brilliant. Yeah. So you go on Twitter and uh, just search, you know, college admissions, and you'll see all kinds of happy kids holding their uh, holding their admissions oh, letters. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But it's that whole, it's that instantaneous, you know, real-time sharing mm -hmm. ability. Again, uh, the, the amazing ability to 
to garner to get all this massive amounts of information and, and education through seeing things you would normally not get to see if you didn't have such a device or we didn't have this digital world that we're living in these days. So amazing things. I'd like to uh, throw a little fortune telling question to you. Sure. Where's this all going to go? Where's this going to go? How fast are we going to be able to get? How fast can how fast can we assimilate? How fast can can the human mind keep up with all this information? How much can we store? How much can we take and how fast can we continue to to accelerate because I think that the trend goes with AI. Um, artificial intelligence. Yeah, artificial intelligence coming upon us very, very quickly. Um, the leaps are going to be to the second and fourth and tenth power. And things are going to happen even more quickly. Computers are going to get faster. Possibilities are going to increase even greater. The ability to communicate, the, abil the ability to um, process information. Interesting how fast, again, we've talked about this in some of the past shows about we get all this information and yet when our computer slows down a little bit, we're sitting there, come on, faster, faster, I'm, I'm having to wait, don't make me wait. Oh yeah. I mean, where does this all go? How is this all gonna, gonna, where is this gonna be in 10 years? You know, those are really good questions and it would be um, really interesting to have um, like a neuroscientist on mm -hmm. the show with us to really talk because what you're, what you're really alluding to is, you know, the brain and, mm -hmm. and how, how quickly and how much can we process as individuals. Mm -hmm. And so that would really be a fascinating, um, a fascinating question to ask them. And I think, I guess where I'm going with this is that maybe we have a heck of a lot more potential than we ever realized to some degree <coughs> um, from from our ability to be able to keep up with the speed of these processors, because the human mind is an amazing thing. Um, not trying to be esoteric, but the human mind is an amazing thing, and it's 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 such a creative device to begin with that now we're we're able to have tools that actually can work as fast and maybe potentially in the future a lot faster than we're able to. In our own brain, which yeah. is which is kind of stunning that technology would kind of surpass and of course see all the new movies coming out you know about AI and Johnny Depp's got that new movie coming out that you know where they capture his consciousness as he passes from this world and then lives in the, in the digital world through you know them downloading his thought. so pretty interesting stuff but I don't think it's that far off I mean I honestly don't think that um, technology is is uh, is not going to be able to do all this stuff. Artificial intelligence, cars that park themselves, all of the... Well, you know, we should do a show on this. We, you know, we stay tuned. I think sometime in our future, we'll do a show on artificial intelligence and, and then try to, if we can't get someone to, um, to be live with us, at least maybe um, do a phone interview and kind of get some information from sure. those working, working with the brain because I think that's a really fascinating question. I think as far as um, visual imagery goes and visual content, I think that um, this will continue to be a very important part mm -hmm. of um, a small business's repertoire sure. of marketing. And I think that um, you know the way we're going today, and I, and I really don't see this changing, is that when we are selling our services or our brand or our company, what we're doing is we're telling a story. Mm -hmm. And people want to connect with a story behind mm -hmm. a brand. Yeah. And I think that um, these visual pieces help a company to tell that story. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's the, the images and the photographs or whether it's it really is the live video, mm -hmm. um, just so, so important. Because um, what I've seen, even though we do live in this digital age, people really want to make a connection with a, with a person or something, you know, behind the brand. So in mm -hmm. other words, um, and I'll just use PNG because they're here in town and they're my former company. But um, you know, if you're interacting, let's say with the Downey brand, you want to talk to the person who's behind the brand, mm -hmm. a, a live human. You don't want to mm -hmm. be having a conversation with, you know, the bottle, uh, with a nice little blanket on the front. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you know, that that's just so important. Is it's that it's that interaction and um, in the storytelling and connecting, mm -hmm. connecting with that story that's gonna be very important. Yeah, I think that's, again, the, the, the whole thing with, with marketing and, and getting access to the, to the mediums that get these messages across. 
is, um, is again, this, the digital age has really made such an impact on. And as this relates to the, to the, to the video and the, and the visuals that we're able to now um, transmit at lightning speed all over the world with our, with our Facebooks or our Instagrams or any other medium that, app that we picked to, to, to use for that. There are some really other interesting apps that, that people are seem to be using. And I, I hear about the trends, and I don't have kids, but I hear about the trends where kids are starting to move away. They started out with MySpace, and then they moved to Facebook, and now they're jumping to Instagram. And, and um, do you find that to be a, a, a trend that's, that's happening more? Can you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, especially with teenagers, um, Instagram is huge, and, and the Snapchat is absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. And um, with Snapchat now, they can include um, some text. Mm -hmm. So it's not just kind of sending the picture of your silly face or mm -hmm. you know whatever, whatever you're taking the photo of, but you can actually start to have a conversation too, mm -hmm. which I find really interesting. Um, so yeah, and I think, so I think teenagers um, are, are moving really towards visual, but at the same time, they're holding on very strongly to the texting. Mm -hmm. And to we talked a little bit about this last time mm -hmm. with the WhatsApp. Yeah. Um, so what I see is that teenagers have um, group chats, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's your lacrosse team or whether mm -hmm. it's your, you know, the cool kids in the senior class or whatever the grouping is, um, I think they're very much into those conversations because they view them as being more private. Mm -hmm. than any kind of a conversation that might be on a Facebook. Sure. Well, they're gone from, I mean, they have left Facebook. Yeah. I mean, they may still have the accounts, but they're really not. They're not using They're it. not using them. Yeah. But, but even with Twitter, um, you know, the, the group, they feel that the group uh, text chatting, mm -hmm. I think, is just a little bit, a little bit more private. Targets people they really want to communicate with. Exactly. And it happens faster. It's, it's almost like bulk email to a lot of friends at once, but it's happening in real time, and, and they get access to it so much quicker. Emails right. or even just kind of a following a thing to the past that people are using them to follow a paper trail. It's, oh, yeah. it's a great way to document things, but you know, emails are, did you check your email today? No, I didn't. Well, and, and you know, um, so we as businesses or even individuals may amass a stockpile of, um, of photos, you know, mm -hmm. digital photos, um, maybe some video, you know, little video clips or, or whatever. And there are a lot of, um, products out there that will help you to pull all of these things together mm -hmm. to create your own special pieces mm -hmm. of, of video or, you know, photo journal or whatever you want to do. So um, there's one that I found, Flipagram, and uh, their kind of tagline is, bring moments to life, create beautiful short video stories using your photos set to music you love. So I, I love that, you know, your stories, mm -hmm. the photos are your stories, stories of your life. Um, Animoto is one that I have used mm. um, many times. I've actually had their um, pro subscription probably for about five years. Mm -hmm. And um, what I love about it is that you can take, you choose all of your pictures and then you can choose music and um, they will set the pictures to kind of move to the beat of the music. Hmm. Really interesting in, in terms of how they, the pictures fade in and out and slide and move, but it's to that beat. So hmm. they've, they've got it all kind of you know, figured out with the, the computer and the algorithm. Mm -hmm. And then um, you also can add, I wanna say maybe 15 or 20 second snippets of your own videos. Hmm. So your pictures, let's say it was just pictures only, um, when you look at the Animoto video, the picture, it looks like a video because the pictures are all moving as if it were a video. Mm -hmm. And then you add that live video clip in there too and it's a very, very cool, um, just a cool uh, rendition. And Animoto, for folks that want to try it out, they have a free product mm -hmm. that allows you to produce, um, I believe it's a 30 second video, yeah. unlimited. So I would suggest people just you know try it out. I've used it for my business um, mm -hmm. a lot and also for personal uses as well. Yeah, well what a cool little app that is. Like I said, everybody's a mini movie maker now. Yes. Making quick little shorts. You know, speaking of movie making, have you heard of um, a product called Camtasia? I'm not certain. It's by TechSmith, and um, it, 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 you can kind of produce your, your own little videos. It's got mm -hmm. all these really cool editing things. Oh, cool. Um, so that's a, getting back to your whole point of everybody's a 
yeah. producer and a movie maker. So, yeah, you have that ability. That's now, great. if you live in Anderson Township, you have the ability to come here to AC right. TV and actually use the equipment. And why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because you've got a lot of experience. Well, that's a great editing. plug. That's a great plug for AC TV, and we like that. While we take that opportunity to thank AC TV for uh, sponsoring our show here today, and and Nikki and Andy and Shane here at the studio have been great. But yes, you uh, AC TV has a, has a great facility here in Anderson Township at the Anderson Center, and um, full blown production studio, video editing, et cetera, et cetera. You too can become your own director and producer. So um, come here and they'll give you all the information you need to create your own show or um, do whatever you want, film a documentary. So yeah, and great I, facility. I think that that is, I mean, what an incredible opportunity for residents. It is. You know, to be able to do that. And, and, and um, I could be wrong, but I think that people, folks can actually check out cameras and, and go film sure. outside the township too. So if you yes. have you know, an event or a school function or you want to make your monster movie in the backyard so you can yes. show it for Halloween, yes. um, you know, all the tools are, are right here. So. Well, they educate you and once you're educated and you, you, you go through the process, um, you can check out equipment and go make your first uh, full-length motion picture. That's right. Which is great. What a, what, a, what a great facility. So thanks to ACTV and, and all their great programming. They have a, a ton of variety of good shows. So if you're not watching them, you should watch some of the other shows. And we really appreciate everybody coming and visiting our show here for our 10th episode. That's right. I feel like we should have a cake with some candles or something. Well, you know, for, for number 12, we absolutely should. We should. We should have a party. And I want to say, um, because I always like to, to leave our, our viewers with what we're going to be doing next time. Yeah. And um, I, I think next time, um, we just actually may have a guest. And the topic is going to be um, about how people incorporate digital media into their business and into their lives. So you've heard a lot about, um, or they have heard a lot about our lives and our businesses, mm -hmm. but um, to have somebody come in and, and kind of share how sure. they're using digital media in their Absolutely. particular business. So um, I think that'll be a, a nice treat for everybody. Yeah, we've got all kinds of surprises up our sleeves for the viewing audience. And again, we really appreciate everybody coming to, to view uh, Digitally Speaking because we've covered an awful lot of topics, but the the Every, the platforms are growing so quickly that we're always going to have plenty of things to That's talk right. about. That's right. We're never at a loss over here, at, at digitally speaking. And um, we really appreciate the viewers uh, visiting us. And please tell all your friends and check out YouTube because everything's uploaded to YouTube, uh, either on the ACTV. And I think we have another channel. Isn't the, your channel? On, um, um, on Facebook, on the uh, create, C3 Creating Connections Consulting Facebook page, um, you can find the videos there as well. There's a, a video um, tab on that particular page. Yes. Well, we'd like to thank everybody again for, for viewing our, our show, and we would love for you to share it with all of your friends. So please tell everyone, friends, neighbors, relatives, etc., to tune in to Digitally Speaking, and um, we look forward to seeing you at our next episode. And thanks for joining us today here at ACTV. Hashtag Digitally Speaking.